On this episode of Ask Dan, we're going to talk about coil line in the Surface Book 2 and whether it's a problem or not, and whether or not we can still expect Windows 10 on ARM this year. Stay tuned. How do you see Cortana expanding to other parts of the world where it isn't available at the moment? All right, so this is the question that we're asked often, and I totally understand and feel for people here. And I do agree, Microsoft appears to be dropping the ball here again with Cortana. Now let's not underestimate the problems here. We're trying to expand Cortana in different languages, AI, machine learning. It's complex stuff, and they're very much taking their time before they release Cortana on other markets. Now they've always given the excuses because they don't want Cortana just to be a voice assistant, but rather AI and to know the market it's in so that people get a personalized experience. So if you look up a movie or wanna know where the local supermarket is, it's gonna give you that information. It also respects cultural differences around those countries. So. I agree, that's complicated stuff, but still, why not release this stuff in other countries, even in a beta form or an earlier version without that stuff, just so people have some sort of voice assistant. It's nice to have high standards, but when it prevents it from launching in other markets, especially this late in the game, I think it's a little bit disconcerting. I have heard they are doing a lot of backend changes right now for Redstone 4 and 5, and we're gonna be seeing deeper integration with Cortana into things like Xbox and other services. But unfortunately, I don't have anything concrete to offer at this time, we'll just have to wait, and that's gonna be a loss for Microsoft. Next question is a two-parter that's totally related. Number one, are we still gonna see Windows 10 on ARM devices in 2017? And will those devices be able to run power applications and do some heavy lifting? Windows 10 and ARM, I think, is one of the most exciting things that's happening with Microsoft and its manufacturers. And there's a lot of questions we have about this product, and I don't want to set expectations too high. Regarding, are we going to see it in 2017? Yes, I don't know if those will actually be on the shelves, but do expect information coming in the next few weeks. Qualcomm is supposed to have their conference out in Hawaii and rumors have it we're going to hear something out there which would totally make sense since that is about the time that Microsoft said end of the year. I think however we're going to see a soft rollout for Windows 10 on ARM. Obviously they missed the holiday season so we're not going to see a big push now. I think we'll see some devices trickle out over the next few months and it'll slowly build momentum up. They'll get feedback and see how it goes but don't expect this to be like a huge push. Now regarding the second part, can these run power applications? Microsoft has shown in a demonstration the ability to run Photoshop and some games on these devices. I think people have really high expectations. I'm a little bit more cautious here. These are Windows 10 on ARM, so you're talking about a Snapdragon 835 at this time. Now, what's cool about Snapdragon, what Qualcomm is doing, is those processors are advancing quite rapidly. So the 840 or whatever comes next, I think will even be more powerful. And we are moving towards these processors approaching the x86 level, but we're still pretty far from that. Nonetheless, I expect the performance to be okay. I'm talking about maybe Core M3. If we can do that, I'd actually be happy. I don't think you're gonna be able to run compiling apps on this, heavy lifting video games. I don't think that's gonna be quite possible. Or rather, if you can, it's be like running maybe on an Atom processor where it'll run, it just won't be ideal. Let's temper expectations right now. I think there's a lot of potential here, but I think these first devices will perform okay. I think the more interesting part is gonna be the fact that they get very good battery life and they're gonna be instant on. So they'll always be connected, they'll always be pulling in data, but you're not gonna to have to recharge them very often and maybe able to go a few days. And that's where the initial benefit will be. I noticed a faint hissing and static noise in my Surface Book 2 13 inch with a Core i7. Is this normal or not? Okay, so this person asking this question has already exchanged their Surface Book 2 for another due to this coil wine issue, and that's what it is. This is coil wine, and I actually wrote about it in my 13-inch review saying I heard it, and the only reason I brought it up was because I'm normally not sensitive to coil wine, so people bring it up all the time, and I don't really notice it. You do have to be sort of sensitive to high-pitched noises for it to bother you. Having said that, I did notice that on the Surface Book 2 13-inch, specifically when it's plugged into AC and it was running on high performance mode. You can notice it in some other modes as well or not plugged in, but it's very, very faint at that point. So the question is, is this normal? 
Unfortunately, it kind of is. Now, it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some companies use different components and it's not as bad. Sometimes they use dampeners to affect it. We're also dealing here with the Intel Core i7 8th generation processor, which is now quad core. And I think there's a lot more going on there in terms of power drain that's going to affect this. Now, what coil wine is has to do with the coils on the board itself. And there's a vibration and a resonance. It gets very complicated. You can look it up. Other people have done a better job explaining it, but it's very common to electronic components. Now, as far as returns, Microsoft is pretty good with that with Surface, and you can try to exchange it, but I wouldn't get your hopes up in getting a device that doesn't have this as an issue. I think it just is with the hardware right now. In fact, we are seeing an uptick in coil wine reports for these newer devices with the Intel Core i7 8th generation processor. So I think it's kind of a byproduct. Now, that doesn't mean that Microsoft can't do something later on to maybe fix this. They may try to patch it with a firmware update that may adjust the regulation of the power coming in, and it may dampen the noise a little bit. They may also do a hardware change down the line that fixes it. I don't really know. What I can tell you though is most manufacturers do not consider this to be a defect. So you can try to return yours. I don't have high hopes though that it'll be fixed. So you just have to kind of live with it. Everybody has different sensitivity levels. Now I'm not very sensitive to this stuff. I run the 13 inch every day. And unless you're in a super quiet room like a library and you're plugged in and running a powerful application, you may not notice it. So just keep that in mind. The best bet here is read reviews of what people are saying and seeing what they say about it. If you are sensitive to coil wine though, you may want to avoid the Surface Book too. So that does it for this episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or use our email, AskDan at WindowsCentral.com. You can also use our forums at Windows Central and ask me a question there. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Um, this is a two-parter. Can you uh, pull this down? I'm gonna, is it okay if I say it's a two-parter question?